Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name's Eve K. I'm on the channel, and today I want to talk about my latest purchase, which was a Sega Mega Drive uh, 2. And I want to explain why I bought a Sega Mega Drive in 2022 and what I plan to do with this going forward. Now, for those who don't know, I already bought a Sega Master System and I've bought a Mega Drive 2, meaning I now own some of Sega's earlier consoles and arguably Sega's most successful consoles out of the ones they released. So. I've bought an adapter so I can actually put these play these systems on, you know, on uh, my stand TV, which does AV out and HDMI, so that's great. But I want to talk about why I bought a Mega Drive specifically, because a lot of people point out to me that the game I've got shown here, Sonic the Hedgehog, the original one, you can get it on like any system now. You can get it in any system. You can get a ROM online anywhere. And yeah, that is true. You can get Sonic the Hedgehog on basically anything. The Switch has Sonic the Hedgehog, PSP. Uh, you can get game on Xbox, you know, there's a Sega Mega Drive collections released on like all major platforms and re-released multiple times. But yeah, I've uh, bought a Mega Drive. And the reason I did, right, is because, first of all, it was cheap. It was £45 for me to get this system. And I thought, you know what, this is a, that's a good deal. That's a good deal to get just a bit of gaming history. To add to my little collection, because obviously, the position that I have 10 consoles, you know, and adding the Mega Drive, and Mega Drive was always a system I wanted. Because Mega Drive was a system, which was obviously before my time, but the games were well known. The games spoke volumes to me, and there's another reason I got this system, and that's because not all Mega Drive games are coming to Evercade. Right? Obviously, you all know, you've all seen my channel. You've all, if you're watching it, you've always seen my channel. You've always seen my videos. My channel is Evercade focused, roughly most of the time. But sometimes I make videos which aren't about the Evercade, and obviously with this video, it's not about the Evercade, but. I know there's a ton of indie developers who are making games for the Mega Drive. And those games aren't coming to Evercade. Not all of them are on Evercade. Now people point out, well, Mega Cats put games on Evercade and so does Pico Interactive. That is true. In the case of Pico Interactive, those games are already on Mega Drive. They were either just not released or they were released and obviously the company who made them went bankrupt. And with Mega Cat, Mega Cats put some games on Evercade. Mega Cats believe they put 18 games from their catalogue on Evercade, which is not all the games Mega Cats have put out, sure. But that's what I'm saying. There's games that they haven't put on. And there's games like, you know, uh, how do I put this? There's games like Paprium that I want to play, right? And Pier Solar, which I know they cost, will cost quite a lot of money for me to get a copy of, right? And I could have just got them on my, like, Xbox or whatever, fine. But I want to actually own a physical copy of these games for the sake of, you know, preservation, owning them, because, well, we all know how digital distribution is over a lot of systems. Once, once those servers go offline, that store's gone. All those games, if they weren't downloaded, you've lost them. And to me, the Mega Drive was a huge system back in the day. It was obviously one that was really popular in the UK, which is obviously where I reside. So I figured I should just get one. It was cheap, and I also got something for six pounds as well. You know, and I was uploading a YouTube short earlier, showing showing me basically taking it out of the bag and showing that I own one now. And it's like the 10th console I have in my collection now. I've obviously got two Xboxes, not the original, but obviously Xbox One, Xbox Series S, Evercade VS, Evercade Handheld, C64 Mini, uh, Nintendo DS, Game Boy Advance, SP, uh, Nintendo Switch Lite, and a Sega Master System. Now I've got a Sega Mega Drive, so that's another little <laughs> a bit of a piece for the collection. And also, a lot of people tell me that I should have just bought a Sega Mega Drive Mini, which is coming out later this year. I don't really care about mini consoles. I don't really want the games preloaded on the system or a system that I can collect for. And some Mega Drive games are pretty cheap, to be honest, to try and get hold of. And aren't re released and aren't, they weren't, aren't really available in a legal capacity on modern systems. Because obviously, one game, one, one game I'm trying to get for the system is obviously Miss Pac Man. And for those who don't know about Miss Pac Man controversy, Namco is refusing to play royalties, apparently, to the original creator of Miss Pac Man and this whole issue, so they're not pre releasing those games. So. Yeah, Pac-Man Museum uh, only had 14 games, and it didn't have the Miss Pac-Man games, which was a little bit disappointing. But I digress, and hopefully people will understand this, and obviously, I know it's weird that I've put this on the Evercade channel, but, you know, it is what it is. And so I want to make a video comparing the Mega Drive 2 to Evercade VS, talking about whether or not they're a suitable replacement. And yeah, I just want to hear what you guys think. Sign off in the comments down below. Do you own a Mega Drive? Do you, do you want to buy a Mega Drive? You know, did you own one back in the day when you were younger, or you know, did you, do you plan to get one? You know, what was your favorite Mega Drive game? Did you have the Mega Drive collections on your Switch or whatever? Let me know all that stuff in the comments down below. I've been Eve K. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'm signing out. Peace.